back. We have now crossed the green line and are in the northern part of Cyprus. We've come to the town of Famagusta, a place that's very symbolic for Cypriots. This is a place that remains a powerful symbol of that violent separation of an island and its people 44 years ago. 60 kilometers east of the capital, in the city of Famagusta, on the Turkish side, a group of citizens is trying to imagine the future of their country after reunification. Famagusta saw its Greek community flee entirely when Turkey invaded in 1974. Their old neighborhood, Varosha, has remained completely empty. It's occupied by Turkish soldiers now. Kilometers of abandoned buildings line the beach. They are one of the most visible symbols of the island's partition. But the dozens of members of the Echo City project want to transform them. They are architects, engineers, and organic farmers from both the Turkish and Greek Cypriot communities who are intent on turning Varosha into a model for reunification as a 100% green neighborhood. The idea originally started with my mother, who is um, a refugee from Varosha, from inside the closed area of Famagusta. Um, her dream was always to uh, someday return. She thought, we have a unique opportunity to start from scratch and, and do things right this way. We can avoid the mistakes of the past 43 years. Charon grew up just in front of Varosha. For her, an ecological transformation isn't just desirable, but indispensable. This problem is always needed a big idea, and this is a big idea to show people that what kind of coexistence and sustainable future we can build together. Otherwise, we will die together because everything is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking in this island. The group has presented its project to the city of Famagusta and has received support from numerous Greek and Turkish politicians. But Verosha's future is, like the rest of the island, intimately tied to negotiations and reunification. Well, we've come onto the beach here in Famagusta, in front of the Varosha area of the town. And I'm in the company of uh, MEP Takis Hagiorgiou. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Now, you're with the Akel Leftist Party of, of Cyprus, Cyprus yeah. and the, the leftist group in the European Parliament as well. Well, just to talk about one sort of project in particular, we are, of course, in Famagusta. And uh, it's a place that uh, you're going to be taking part in a fact-finding mission for the European Parliament. Uh, first of all, tell us how you sum up Famagusta today. It's it's seen as quite a symbolic place. I think that Europeans, ha all of us, we have to work to see that area being open again, which may, helps, may help Greek and Turkish Cypriot to work mm -hmm. within the city again, all of them together, uh, to rebuild the city and to give the possibility to the, to the people of Cyprus to come together building or rebuilding a city. That would be a very, very uh, positive uh, period uh, for all of us. It's certainly an idea that I'm sure many of the people we've spoken to around Cyprus would be in favour of. However, if we look at these buildings behind us in the Varosha neighbourhood, uh, some of them have been bombed and obviously never taken care of since, the whole area abandoned since 1974. Uh, what specific aim do you hope for when you take part in that fact-finding mission in May of this year? If Turkish and Greek Cypriots can come with us, around us that day, to give the message to themselves, first of all, and to Europe, secondly, that we want a solution, that we still have, that there is still a burning coal under the ashes supporting the idea of a solution. I don't want to have people here just talking about Famacusta, which is a very, very uh, big issue but I want them to be here to support the idea of a solution. Well, let's go meet some people from the Turkish Cypriot community. Uh, we're going to find out what people from both sides think about the situation here in Famagusta and beyond. Some people believe that the Turkish Cypriots are more in favour of a solution than the Greek Cypriots. What do you think? It's true. Because Why? Why is that? Greek Cypriot is saying about occupation, this is only words, but we leave the occupation conditions. Why in your last elections the, the elements supporting rather Turkey and, and the idea to be closer to Turkey, they have won the election? Is it democracy in the north? 
Is it democracy in Turkey? We have to join our forces together with the Turkish Cypriot to get country, our country back. I think uh, also we, we have this many times. second generation and third generation of uh, Turkish settlers population who is in favor yes. of uh, a settlement as well, because they see that uh, the current system is not generating more jobs. Uh, they see that there are better chances in the EU and elsewhere. I feel myself like a meat in the sandwich. One side is Turkey, one side is the Republic of Cyprus also. <laughs> when we demanded our rights from the Republic, they are saying, after the solution. When we demanded our rights from Turkey, after the solution, where are we going? My wife made a recourse against Turkey in the Strasbourg court, and she won the case. How much? Uh, it was originally 800,000 euro for a house and some piece of land. They refused to pay. For us, this is not the main thing. For us, the main thing is that we go back to our property and to our house. Well, before we move on from Fama Gusta, I just want to come back to you, Taki Sajiogu, for one last question. There are some people here in Cyprus who say that a peace settlement could, in fact, be a way for Turkey to gain more influence over Cyprus. What do you say to that? Yes, there are a lot of people thinking uh, in that way. That's why I said before that I want to see the parameters of the solution and I want to see that these parameters say to me that year by year um, Turkey is uh, leaving Cyprus back mm -hmm. and uh, they leave us Turkish and Greek Cypriots to govern our country as we want to do. Well, thank you very much, Taki Sajiogu, for meeting us here in Famagusta. I thank you. Now, uh, if we look closer at the Turkish Cypriot community themselves, back in 2004, when there was a referendum on the so-called Anan peace plan, 65% of them did vote in favour. However, since then, the political context has changed somewhat, as has Turkish Cypriot's attitudes towards Turkey and towards President Erdogan. This report from Luke Brown. An angry mob of Turkish loyalists attacks a symbol of free speech in northern Cyprus, Africa magazine. Inside, the staff take shelter, waiting for the police to intervene. The debris has been cleared away now. Africa's chief editor is Chanel Event. The violence of the attack was unprecedented. This place was completely covered in glass. It was impossible to walk here. And all this took place before the eyes of the police. Chanel Event is well known for his outspoken editorials. The front page that led to the attack was typical. He compared the Turkish offensive in Afrin in Syria to the invasion of Cyprus in 1974. That provocative stance angered the Turkish president Recep Tayyip Erdogan and his local allies. The Erdogan terror in Turkey is also coming here. Erdogan did away with the press and the media. He did away with the judiciary. He wants to do the same with our media. This was an act of terror that gave out the message that those with an opposing voice will be stamped out. Turkish loyalists have long weighed on local politics, as Turkey is the only state to recognize northern Cyprus. Erhan Arikli is the president of the Turkish settler party Rebirth that took part in the demonstration. Four decades after the invasion, for Erhan and his supporters, Turkey is still calling the shots. If Europe doesn't accept us and keeps the northern part of Cyprus outside of its sovereignty, then this is the EU's problem. Turkey has been meeting all the needs of northern Cyprus since 1974. Turkey has helped us whenever we've needed help. It's our motherland. But the pro-Turkey protest doesn't speak for everyone this side of the UN buffer zone. Four days later, thousands marched in support of Africa magazine and of free speech. Selma Elam helped organize that rally. She says many moderate Turkish Cypriots fear that their way of life is under threat, especially as ever more settlers arrive from Turkey itself. Democracy, uh, They've been trying to replace our democracy, our human rights, freedoms, tolerance and respect with fascism, 
lynch mobs, violence and war. If they continue, our society will be wiped out. For moderate Cypriots, both Greek and Turkish, the failure of peace talks last year only serves to reinforce the status quo and to bolster extremists on both sides. Well, I've come now to one of the five crossing points in the buffer zone, the green zone that's surveyed by the United Nations that runs all the way across Cyprus. I'm here to meet uh, an MEP, Kostas Mavrides. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now, you're actually from what's now northern Cyprus. Uh, is all of Cyprus still your homeland? Yes, I was born in the northern occupied part of Cyprus, uh, but still I express in the huge majority of Cypriots. We consider all of Cyprus, from east to, to west, and from the north to the south, as one unified Cyprus. Unfortunately, we are all part of the European Union as one member state, but the government cannot exercise effective control in the northern part due to the Turkish occupation. And this is, we are in the middle of one of the major crossing points, mm. and this is uh, the household cooperation. So uh, let's have a closer look at the House of Corporation. Uh, what actually happens here? And here, young people from both sides can meet and talk and plan and build up friendships. Of course, these are very important built-in measures of trust, but they will never replace a real, viable solution that will bring security for, the, for our homeland as a unified place. Well, if we walk any further, we're actually not really allowed to continue filming. So let's go to the north together to your village where you were born. Let's go. Let's go. Well, here we are. We are now in Vikoma, which is Costas Mavrides home village. Uh, tell us, you left here in 1974, aged 11. Yes, I was living here in my village, my home, uh, until 1974. It was a small paradise for all of us. And all of a sudden we had on uh, July 20th, a Turkish invasion. And it was, uh, the paradise became all of a sudden a nightmare. And uh, what happened with your family? You just decided to leave. Um, this place that you see here was full of uh, trees and we were hiding, trying to save ourselves from bombardment of airplanes, Turkish airplanes. And um, after a few days, uh, the message was very clear. Run for your lives, otherwise you will be slaughtered by Turkish troops. And we ran away. There were little girls, boys, older people. The ones who couldn't run away for their lives and stay behind, the elders, the sick people, most of them uh, either they were executed or they are still missing. And then later on, many years later, you were able to come back here, to come back to your house. This isn't the first time you've come here. What was it like the first time you came back to the house where you grew up? It's something between bittersweet. On one hand, I feel very sweet that I'm home, at the same time, I feel very bitter because I cannot have the part of my life back again because it's still under Turkish occupation. Obviously, now there is a, a, a Turkish family that lives in what was your house. How do you feel about the people here? They are Turkish Cypriots. They were brought here by the regime after 1974. Their original home village is in the government control area by the Republic of Cyprus. Mm -hmm and it is secure and ready for them to go and stay whenever they want to. Of course, um, it's a difficult issue to manage, but I think that what has to prevail is the rule of law of the European Union. And by the way, I, I see something that I like to point to you. Mm. This was my bed in 1970, before 1974, I remember sleeping for years when I was going to elementary school. And the first time when I saw it, I almost collapsed. Um, it's a feeling that I don't wish even for my enemies to feel. Mm. It's very strange. You feel that part of your life is being 
but taken away and put in exile. And I know that this bed might seem like a piece of iron, but it's much more for someone who's left for years. Of course, a very long time has now passed since you and your family fled this house and, and, and everything was divided in two. Do you feel that time could be running out? On one hand, yes, time is working against all of us who want to have a free, unified Cyprus. On the other hand, the basic factor that needs to be taken out of any solution is Turkey. And Turkey, as you know, uh, cannot be trusted. We need to have Turkey uh, out of Cyprus and the guarantor can be, can be for everyone the European Union. I think Europe needs to do more in Cyprus because Cyprus is part of the European Union. It's not some third country. It is a, a matter where many times I say the principles, the values of Europe are being tested in Cyprus where we have a small member state, mm. isolated island away from uh, the continental Europe. And this is where Europe needs to show their muscles. They cannot hide and say, it's your own business. We can serve the interests of Europe, but Europe needs to give us back the protection and safety and security that we expected to have when we joined the European Union. Well, thank you very much for bringing us to your home village, Kostas Mevridas, for giving us your point of view on the whole situation here in Cyprus. It was really indeed my pleasure to have you here. So could checkpoints like this one soon be a thing of the past? We will, of course, be following all of the developments on France 24. For now, though, that is the end of our programme. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you soon.